Okay, this is the uh, engine compartment of our first generation uh, Ford Bronco. Uh, really popular car at this point in time. Um, this is kind of at the end of that era. Uh, this is a 76. They were produced 66 through 77. Real easy to remember. Um, <clears throat> this thing still has its original equipment. Uh, 302 that it was produced with. Still has the Autolite 2 barrel on it that uh, it came with. All the uh, tags and everything from uh, Ford Motor Company are still on the valve pan covers. There's no leaks whatsoever, uh, oil-wise or, or uh, fluid-wise, uh, uh, evident on the front of this motor anywhere or on the uh, sides of it. It has this original equipment cast iron exhaust manifolds on it and its original cast iron intake manifold on it. They did, however, put a uh, low restriction, high flow uh, air filter on it. So. Uh, kind of adds a little bit of a sporty flair to it. It does have power steering and it has power brakes also. Electronic ignition, here's the box for Ford's electronic ignition system in it. It has a, let's see what it has for a fan, it has a flex fan on it. Can't see how many blades, but it's probably at least five, probably seven blade flex fan. Um, a uh, radiator shroud to go with this large capacity high flow it's at least a four-pass aluminum uh, radiator that's uh, on the front of this guy. It does also have a auxiliary transmission cooler in the front here uh, for the uh, transmission fluid. Uh, inner fender panels are just as nice and clean as you'd ever hope to find anywhere. Uh, the wiring is all nice and uh, well kept. The new starter solenoid here. Um, let's see, original Ford uh, distributor in it does have uh, a newer set of plug wires on it. They're conventional, they're not high silicone. Original coil still intact. Uh, original Ford style uh, ignition cap on it. Uh, let's see. You know what, I'm gonna take that back. These may be a, a, a set of uh, silicone uh, wires. They, uh, uh, they're not large diameter, they're not an eight millimeter or something, but they, uh, they could possibly be a nice set of silicone wires on it. The, um, the engine compartment is just as fresh and clean as you would ever hope to find. I don't know what the horsepower was on these guys, but it's certainly enough to pull this thing along as fast as you'd ever want to go in one. It's still a 302, uh, same basic engine that they used in the uh, uh, earlier Mustangs too. So, uh, you know, there was no issue with uh, propelling them along. Uh, Underhood area, everything on this thing is clean. There's absolutely no rust whatsoever evident anywhere. Usually you see it along the windshield bases and along the uh, front of the uh, hood area and this vehicle has absolutely none. Radiator core support is undisrupted. It's never been banged on the nose here. Um, again, the engine compartment is just as fresh and nice and clean as you would ever, ever hope to find. The little chrome air cleaner gives it a little bit of a sporty flare and a little bit of sound too. Um, just a nice, clean engine compartment and uh, you can't see it in the video, but even looking inside the front of the fenders and everything is just all clean and undisrupted. Uh, painted the original factory color just the way it should be. Just a nice car. Uh, it's just as uh, fresh a one as you're ever going to find. We're going to go around the rest of it for you now. Well, you're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and here we go again with our little first generation Broncos. It seems like every time we get these, gone. Uh, the last one we just sold about uh, a week ago. We had three of them, and it uh, didn't take long, and they were all gone. Last one was a little pricey. It was more of a show vehicle, 78,000, but it uh, was a nice vehicle. Um, this one is just every bit as nice, only more originality here instead of being lifted up and, uh, and uh, you know, modified in any way. Um, we're going to go over it and show you everything we can. The paint job on this thing is much nicer than Ford ever did in 1976 uh, when this car was released. The, um, the gaps and, and the fitment of these vehicles was never, it, it never equated to what a conventional car did. They always kind of lacked a little bit fitment wise, but this thing's pretty darn nice. Uh, again, you can see the gap on this hood to the front fender is just as nice as you'd hope to find. About an eighth of an inch the whole way around, a little bit of an overhang here, but kind of common for that. If I put the hood down further, it'll fit up there, but it's not going to fit as well here. Uh, just the fitment the way it was in that day on these vehicles. But again, the finish is just as fresh and nice and clean as you would ever hope to find. Uh, certainly not a show quality paint job, but it's absolutely twice as nice as what Ford gave you in 1976 when this car was released. 
the grill has uh, a nice uh, white accent to it uh, against this uh, like a tan, light brown uh, finish, creamy tan finish. Uh, basils around the headlights, there's no patina whatsoever. There's some kind of birdcage thing around the front of it here. I don't know what that's for, but uh, there's some kind of grating on the front of the uh, headlights. It does snap off, though. <laughs> I don't know what it's there for, but it does snap off. Um, parking lights, the lenses are nice and clear and amber, just the way they should be. Ford designation on the front, and there's also no patina on it. There's your hood release. Um, one thing I have to point out, this thing probably spent most of its life that's why if you look at the engine, everything looks still just as clean and fresh as can be. Because I don't believe this car was driven a lot of miles. I think it was towed most of its life behind a motorhome. Uh, you can see where the uh, um, plug is for the uh, wires to make sure that the brake lights and turn signals and everything else actuate for you from your vehicle. And there was a uh, hitch thing on the front uh, that uh, Donnie took off, so I'm going to guess it spent most of its life in tow. There's your two holes for the uh, license plate bracket in, in the state that you'd need that. Chrome on the front bumper is absolutely flawless. There's no dents or dinghies or marks. Uh, no one's put their feet up on it. Uh, nobody stood on it to do any work in the engine compartment. Just a nice front end. Basil around this light the same way. There's no patina, just nice fresh chrome. Uh, great fitment of the bumper in front. Uh, great fitment of the hood. A nice accent with the uh, white as opposed to the light tan uh, finish on the vehicle. Uh, just a nice front end of this vehicle. There's uh, no uh, indication that there's ever been any trauma to it. Uh, the paint, the fit, the finish. Uh, the grill itself, there's no marks or indentures or anything in it. Uh, it's a nice front end. Uh, you're not going to find one any nicer than this. This is as good as it gets for a, a first gen Bronco. We're going to go down the side of it and I'll show you. Okay, driver's side of our first gen Bronco. Um, Side marker light in the front, really nice. Uh, there's no patina whatsoever around the uh, trim piece on it either. Uh, where the front fender goes on to the nose piece here uh, that goes over and connects to the grill, there's a, a nice fitment. Uh, usually there's a uh, little bit more of a gap. This one has none. Um, Bronco designation on the side. I'll pin on this thing. There's no bondo on it anywhere. It's just as nice and fresh as you'd ever hope to find one. Trim around the front window, uh, nice as you'd ever hope to find. There's no marks, no dents in it whatsoever from stones being thrown up. Correct wiper arms and blades for the vehicle also. Tinted glass in the front window. Uh, looks like a nice, uh, nice straight front end on this car. There's no, where this hinge is, there's usually some rust or some deterioration. There's absolutely none on this. There's no indication that it's ever been repaired. Uh, it, 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 just as totally rust free as you could ever hope to find. Of course, there's your hinge for your hood. Uh, there's no drip rail molding. I'm going to assume that there's no dents in the top of it. I can't really see, but I'm sure that there aren't. Um, fitment of the uh, front fender to the door is actually very good. Usually these things have an indenture from where the door actually goes in. There's kind of a drop off here. This is as nice a door fitment as I've seen for a long time. At least that's a $78,000 one we have. Uh, it does have drip roll molding, how about that? Huh. Apparently it goes around, it completely circumnavigates the vehicle. It goes around, there's no dents on this side anyway, and I don't see any across the front. It appears to be tinted glass on the wing. Maybe the window's too on the side. I can't absolutely say it's, it's tinted, but it appears to be, at least inside here. Swingway mirrors, uh, the, the uh, stainless steel is real nice and fresh looking on them. Uh, wipe, wipes, whiskers, uh, as nice as you'd hope to find. The uh, seal around the window itself is just nice and fresh. Uh, the wing the same way, nice resilience to the rubber that seals it. Door to the uh, rocker panel, to the rear quarter panel. Look at this. This is really amazing. This is as nice a, a little first gen Bronco that I've seen for a long time. Chrome on the door handle, just as fresh as could possibly be. Uh, Dual gas tanks on it also. You've got a front tank and you have a rear tank. Uh, the rear tank has a skid plate on it. The front tank is kind of positioned underneath the side of the uh, vehicle right here. About that long, about that wide. Um, all tin. It's all 
tin. There's no fondo anywhere in this thing. It's just as nice as can be. Got a set of, you know what they are, pipes, steps, ironing boards, uh, help you get into the vehicle. Um, definitely a definite uh, good passenger assist to get inside the vehicle. A lot of these things are lifted up a lot higher and that definitely is a necessity. 235 by 15 on a set of uh, chrome spoke wheels. Uh, a little bit wider wheel than came from this uh, on this guy from the factory. Something really unique, and I never saw this before. We did a little research, and this is the way it's done. There's lockout hubs in the front, and guess what? There's lockout hubs in the back. So if you're towing this behind a motorhome, it's just free wheeling. There's absolutely no time being put on the drive line at all. So conceivably, if you towed this thing around for a whole year and drove it. Uh, you know, 300 miles or 400 miles, that's probably all that's on it. I don't know that definitively, but from looking at the engine and the exhaust manifolds and everything else, you can tell that there's not a whole lot of time on this engine, on this drive line. Uh, body is just as straight and nice as can be. Again, the side marker light in the back here, uh, no patina, nice clear lens on it. The quarter panel where it goes to the uh, back section, the tail section, absolute precise fitment on this one. Uh, we just put this uh, stripe on. We had Andy put a uh, accent stripe on it, kind of to break up a little bit of that uh, uh, tan body on this thing and give it a little bit of a contrast with the top and the grill. Really looks nice, and it, with the uh, white letter tires also, there are a set of fresh hand cook um, white letter tires that also accentuate the uh, white on the uh, uh, stripe and the top and the grill and the back bumper too. So uh, that's the side. I'd say this is as straight a Bronco as you're ever going to find. A laser straight down the sides. I mean, it, it is just as solid a straight a vehicle as you could ever hope to find. One of the best fitting doors on a uh, first gen Bronco I've ever seen, ever. Uh, let's go the back and we'll see something there. You know what? I forgot to mention, Devin's going to follow me here for a second. I forgot to mention, but the side trim on the side glass for the top is just as nice as you could ever hope to find. There's no marks or dents uh, whatsoever in it. And again, I'm still going to call this, uh, kind of looks like it's tinted to me. May not be, but it kind of looks like it is. The trim around the back part, eh, a couple little dingies here or something did that to it. And maybe a little one here. I can hardly see this one. I can feel it, but two little shots there. And the rest of it is as nice as can be. Nice chrome on the back handle to open that. Um, this is where the license plate comes, obviously. The um, fifth wheel and tire, never been on the ground, still has the little knobbies on it. Um, chrome on the wheels, just as nice and fresh as you'd ever hope to find. Bumper painted white in the back here. Uh, chrome in the front, but white in the back. And it does have a uh, auxiliary jack, one of those real tall jacks affixed to it. Uh, in the event that uh, you'd have to lift this thing up for some reason, because the bottle jack they give you is worthless. Uh, you can't, uh, can't really do too much with it. Uh, it does have an auxiliary jack, though, so if you don't want it, you just take it off and throw it in the garage. Uh, it does have a Class 3 hitch on it also, so it's capable of towing pretty much anything you want. I don't know if you pull any offshore boats with it, but you could certainly pull a smaller boat or, or water bugs or a snowmobile or whatever you want to tow with it, a little trailer. Um, does have that capability. Trim around the real, rear tail lights, uh, just as fresh and clean as can be. Nice clear lens on the uh, parking light. You can't see it from where Devin's at, but same thing on this side. Nice clear anodized finish the whole way around the uh, uh, parking light uh, trim, its enclosure. The um, swing away wheel, all the hardware associated with that swing away mechanism is just as fresh and clean as you could ever hope to find. Paint on the uh, back bumper is white, obviously, and the bumper fitment is nice and linear. Uh, it, it's just a real nice fit vehicle. Uh, I, I can't see anything at all on the back end of this thing. There's absolutely nothing. Uh, for designation on the side, you can't see it behind the wheel, but it's there. And the fitment of the rear back door, whatever you call these things, um, that's as nice as you could ever hope to find one. It's a great back end, fantastic side, and you know, at the front, there's absolutely nothing that uh, is out of place on the front. One more section to do for you. Okay, I forgot to mention again, the drip roll on the back of it here has no dents in it whatsoever. I can look down the side, there's also no dents on it uh, going down the side where your drip roll molding is. Uh, trim around the window on this side, there's absolutely zip. 
no marks, no dents whatsoever in it. Rubber's nice and resilient on it. And you can see where more normally these things are kind of distressed a little bit. This one is not. This is just as fresh and clean as can be. Again, the quarter panel where it goes on to the, the tail section, the tail corner, whatever you want to call it. And again, look here. All tin. Marker light in the back. <clears throat> nice clear lens. No deterioration whatsoever around the uh, basil that uh, houses it. Uh, the paint on this thing is just exemplary. It really is. Uh, for a Bronco, it's just uh, it, it's as nice a vehicle as we've had, other than that one that was very expensive. Uh, chrome on the door handle, no patina, just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. White whiskers are on the uh, window, the same as the other side. Again, the uh, polished stainless uh, swing away mirrors, it's fresh and clean as you'd hope. Uh, rubber around the uh, wing glass the same way. Again, look at the fitment of this thing. This is totally insane for a Bronco. <laughs> Amazing. That's, that's about as nice as I've ever seen. It, it is, except for that expensive one. Bronco designation. Even the chrome on the base of the antenna is just as fresh and clean as can be. Uh, nice sharp edges on the fender. And now we're back up where we started. Uh, our presentation again, uh, the very tip where the fender goes on to it. And everything lines up and fits as it should. Uh, this strike really added a lot to this thing, believe it or not. It, it really broke it up and gave it a lot of uh, pop once we put that stripe on there. It's a uh, 76 Bronco, first generation. These things are really, really hot right now. Uh, very difficult to find, especially in this condition. Uh, this thing's not deteriorated in any way. I really believe it to be a very low mileage wear-wise. I don't know how many miles it has on it rolling down the highway, but I do know that uh, uh, mechanically the thing is as sound as you'd ever hope to find one. Uh, you'll see an interior presentation here in a second, but uh, this is as nice and straight and original looking Bronco as you will ever find anywhere. Uh, we go through a lot of these vehicles, uh, and this one being a hard top is, uh, is kind of preferential with uh, people. Although we do have two more. We're going to show you one in a convertible and we also have one in a little pickup truck. So uh, we have the whole spectrum covered for you. We got a hard top, we got a soft top, and we got a pickup truck. So we got it all. Um, this thing is as nice a one as you're ever going to find in a hard top. It has a white interior. It's available here at Hangsters and we encourage everybody to come down in person and take a look at these vehicles. But if you can't, that's why Devin's going to show you a hundred or close to it, still photos, high resolution, that you can uh, look at every aspect of this, uh, this little Bronco. And uh, if you can come down, come down, take a look at it, drive it, put it up on a rack, look at the undercarriage, and look at 79 other cars that we have in the building while you're at it. You might buy this one, you might end up buying a, a Hemi a Challenger or a, a Roadrunner, who knows, you know. But this is uh, as nice a hard top First generation Broncos you'll ever find is available at Hangsters in Daytona Beach. Well, this is the uh, interior of our uh, 76 first generation Bronco, uh, light tan. Uh, pretty vehicle. It has its original uh, fiberboard hardboard headliner in its front two back. It's, it's there, the original one yet. Uh, it does have a roll bar in it. Um, not a full roll cage, but it does have a roll bar behind the driver and passenger. Uh, Day-night mirror. There's no milkiness whatsoever to it. Uh, obviously, no dash pad, but uh, it does have a kind of a custom dash in it. It has a custom speedometer that does have a trip meter in it and showing 20,000 miles on it. it has a uh, tachometer here. Of course, your gear selector. It is an automatic uh, fuel gauge, temp gauge, amp gauge, and. Uh, uh, oil pressure. Oil pressure gauge. Uh, it does have uh, two separate, um, it's one transfer case. I'm not sure how it works, but uh, you can disengage and engage it in high, low range for this one, I think, and then uh, high range for this one and low range for this one, or the other way. But either way, it works. Um, it has a console in the center, pretty substantial. You can't see it, but there is a radio in here, and it's a, it's a pretty high dollar radio. 
I don't know how you get in here to see it, but I give up. There is a high dollar radio like, hidden in here that flops out so you can put a CD in it and play anything you want. Two speakers in the front. Kind of a unique feature. It has power windows in it, uh, and they do work. Power windows in the vehicle. Uh, it has, um, again, power steering, power brakes, um, custom steering wheel in it, grand steering wheel. Nice, fat, thick one. Um, back seats, front seats, all the upholstery is as it was in 1976 when this, uh, this car was released. does have uh, black uh, loop pile carpeting in it uh, throughout the entire vehicle, even on the uh, fender wells in the back, which most of them are bare, just having carpeting on the floor. This one has it everywhere, even on your kick panels. Uh, so it has a nice carpeted area in it. It has seat belts in the back. And it has a set of seat belts in the front also, so you have a whole an entire complement of seat belts for this vehicle. Uh, let's see, what's this? Uh, it has a um, light there that doesn't work. It probably works with the key on. Um, everything in this vehicle is nice and fresh and clean, just the way it was when it was new. Sun visors the same way, and they're the original ones. Uh, this thing just reeks originality everywhere. It's just as nice a... Uh, uh, Broncos you're ever going to find. It, it, it's uh, the seats are nice, nicely padded. Uh, they're not caved in like uh, most of them are from a lot of usage. And it's just a, a nice, straight, clean, rust-free uh, vehicle with power windows, steering brakes, entire gauge package, including a tachometer, and a real nice high uh, dollar sound system, which I have no idea how to get to, but I know it's in here. Um, Nice vehicle. Take a look at it. It's available at Hanksters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Okay, this thing is kind of unique. Bronco steering wheel. It says Bronco right in the center. See? Ah, how about that? Horn doesn't work, but steering wheel does. Um, <clears throat> tachometer is working. Now we just started this guy up. Left turn signal just beating itself to death over here. You can see it. Then the right turn signal is there. You can see it blinking. Okay. Speedometer will show you shortly. But check this out. Check this out. That's Devin's window. Power windows and a little bronchitis. Huh? Is that neat? And this one the same way. It goes up and down. So we got power windows in this guy. Okay. Uh, we have oil pressure. Nice. Hold about 50 pounds there. Uh, showing us a yeah, eight, a quarter of a tank of gas. Uh, volts charging up, 13.8, just the way it's supposed to be. Water temperature just starting to come up now. We just lit this thing up, so it's just starting to come up. The wipers just working away down there, just trying to show you that they can keep the old windshield clean for you. Um, what else is there? Or it doesn't work. Oh, radio. Devin figured out how to work the radio, and it does. How, how you doing this? Just turn this? Has a really good sound system, actually. Pretty neat. Okay, we have we have oh we have intermittent wipers. I got them on. Okay, I got it. Now they're off. Uh, locking glove compartment in the uh, dashboard. Also a locking center console that has a huge storage space underneath it here. And it has an armrest. Seat belts in this thing, which I don't have on. Uh, let's go for a ride. See how this guy runs. Tranny shifts just as smooth and nice as you'd ever hope to. Car goes down the road just straight as an arrow. Still no hands on the steering wheel, just going straight as can be. There's a guy behind me, otherwise I'd uh, try to do the brakes with no hands, but we'll do it. We turn in down at the bank because this guy's pretty close to me. Speedometer functioning as it should. It looks like it's really accurate too. I'm going about 40, I don't know, 42, 44 mile an hour. Uh, and that's about correct for here. Nice, nice running vehicle. Everything in it seems to work with the exception of the horn. And the uh, car just drives just as nice as can be. It's nice and quiet. It has a conventional exhaust system in it, so it doesn't have any loud pipes or anything on it. Uh, just a nice running uh, first generation Bronco. Uh, the gauge is all working as it should. You can see the temperature up to 
What are we up to here? 110, I think. Yeah, no, it doesn't pull. Whenever you put the brakes on, it does not pull. All right, we'll give this thing a little shot here. Sixes or uh, uh, Hellcats, but uh, nice runner Bronco. Really does a nice job for us. Uh, no shake, shimmy, squeaks, nothing. Very tight steering, very precise. Uh, a little smaller steering wheel diameter wise, so that would give you a little higher resolution to it. Uh, just a nice setup. I mean, just a very, very nicely done. Uh, it, it honestly, it shows 20,000 miles on it on the uh, speedometer, and I don't know if that's correct or not, but. Looking at the undercarriage and the interior and everything else, I would expect that to be fairly accurate. Someone has done this thing and uh, used it, uh, towed it behind a uh, motorhome. So the drive line, from what we can see, and the engine appears to be a very low mile uh, representation of a uh, 76 Bronco. It certainly it runs just like it should and drives and does everything like it should for you. Uh, I have no qualms whatsoever about selling this to my best friend. It's a nice run of the rig. Well, this is the uh, underside of our 1976 first generation Bronco. A really fantastic example of one, too. A lot of originality under this thing. It does have disc brakes in the front. Um, sway bar has new bushings in it. Uh, steering stabilizer added to the front uh, section of it here. No drips or anything from the oil pan. Uh, from the engine, the transmission, or the bell housing area, everything is nice and clean and leak-free at this point. I don't know about two years from now, but right now it's not leaking anything. Um, all the bushings for your front swing arms, trailing arms, are brand new and uh, fresh. You can see they've just been replaced. The uh, springs are new in the front. The shocks are heavy-duty shocks, and they're also new uh, replacements in the front. The, um, the exhaust system is off the standard cast iron exhaust manifold, so it is a, a two-into-one system. It, uh, it has a Y pipe added to it. It goes into a catalytic converter, which would be correct for uh, the uh, emission uh, standards at that point in time, 1976. And it goes into a long under chassis muffler. It's about, you know, it's got to be about 30 inches long. Um, nice quiet exhaust system on it. The frame in this thing is just totally undisrupted. It's a full box frame from front to rear. Ford really uh, spent a lot of time designing a nice, strong uh, mounting point for the uh, uh, Bronco, and it, 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 it shows. This thing uh, is boxed from front to back. Uh, there's no uh, indications of anything ever being done on the front end of it. No trauma whatsoever through the years. Of course, it does have a heavy duty front differential, and this four wheel drive. Brake lines appear to be original equipment yet, and so do the fuel lines. Uh, the floor pans themselves are totally undisrupted. The original parking brake still hooked up and functional. Transfer case also has no leaks whatsoever in it. Uh, U joints appear, they're not brand new, but they appear to have been replaced at some point in their life. The um, auxiliary gas tank, which is the one on the side, has a skid plate with it, and it uh, uh, it is a functional gas tank in this vehicle. So. Uh, you have two tanks. You have one in front and one in the back, which also has a skid plate that we'll see shortly. Floor pans themselves have absolutely no deterioration whatsoever. Zero zip, none. Uh, again, the frame the same way. There's no uh, indications of any type of uh, um, rust or paint blisters or uh, uh, deterioration at all through the years on this vehicle. Everything appears to be as it was in 1976. Um, you can see the, um, I don't know what you call them, side steps. Um, passenger assist the way you get into it or anything. Uh, it's all mounted up just the way it should be. Real heavy duty brackets mounted to the frame itself. Uh, the springs in the rear have a nice curvature to them and a couple of uh, helper springs in the back. Uh, it's, it's just a really heavy duty uh, uh, system on this vehicle that Ford used as far as suspension goes. And this has some type of a, uh, I'm going to call it an aftermarket uh, lift kit, it has a little bit of a lift to it. And I, I don't know what it is. It might be about four inches at the most, I'm going to guess. But it does have the associated coil spring front and leaf spring rear with multi-leafs. And heck, there's got to be one, two, three, eight of them, I think. Uh, 
um, springs in the back for this thing. Nine inch heavy duty Ford rear. You can't break these guys. They're just totally indestructible. The only thing that's stronger than that is a Dana 60 carrier. Uh, drum brakes in the back. New shocks also in the back to coincide with the new shocks in the front. Um, this to the front, drums in the rear. Parking brakes still hooked up and functional. The uh, uh, rear tank is the original style tank. It does have a drain plug in it. It does have a plate with it too. It, um, it, it's just as fresh a fresher car underneath as you can expect it to be. It almost looks like there's not very many miles on this thing from when it was uh, uh, sold new by Ford. Uh, the, the quarter panels themselves have absolutely no repair whatsoever in them or distress or rust or corrosion or any type of deterioration. Uh, back bumper on the inside and the uh, trailer hitch which is hooked up to the uh, uh, main part of the frame is a uh, class 3 hitch and it, uh, it's a nice strong uh, structure that uh, you wouldn't have any problem pulling anything you want with it. Uh, the undercarriage of this thing is just as nice and fresh as, as you'd ever hope to have one. It does have a nice uh, fresh round of uh, hand cooked rubber and a fifth wheel also for the spare to match the four that's on it now. Uh, nice original exhaust system, nice originality underneath this thing. I'm going to guess a four inch lift kit to it. Um, fantastic, fantastic, undisrupted undercarriage of this vehicle. Take a look at it. It's here at Hangsters and it's one of three that we're going to put up for sale. We have this guy which is a hard top, then we have a little pickup truck, and then we have a little soft top. Uh, same as this only has a soft top on it.